Hello all, so now I will be starting with signal space representation and thoroughly we will be discussing Gram-Smith orthogonalization process which is nothing but signal space representation ok so here what Gram-Smith said is that any set of M energy signals mind that these are energy signals because in real world we have energy signals that is signals which are having finite energy otherwise if we have infinite energy then energy crisis of the world would have been solved so for energy signals if we have m energy signals then they can be expressed as linear combination so this is some alien term right for you so we'll be discussing all this thing and at the end we will be coming back towards gram smith but before that let us just finish the definition so as linear combination of n orthonormal basis this is also unfamiliar term like and where provided that n is always less than or equals to m and this we will see when we will consider example ok in this series only so we can see that this is just the arbitrary example ok just don't uh, search anywhere for this for the proof of this that any let's say we have three signals s1 s2 and s3 then they can be represented as a linear combination of three orthonormal basis function phi1 phi2 and phi3 so now what are this linear combination then what is this orthonormal basis function right all this thing we will be discussing thoroughly right but before that let us go to something called signal space representation because this is nothing but signal space representation and in signal space representation what we have we have the signal s of t we have signal like this but it is represented in terms of vector like this right so it's just a framework it's a framework to represent a signal as vector so but why are we getting something yes of course signal becomes just a point in a vector space and whatever properties and uh, fundamental uh, that what we can say fundamental things like vector addition vector multiplication whatever we can do translation anything that we can do with vectors we can do it with signal as well and for instance we can say that we can evaluate distance between two signals angles between two signals and so on and so forth right so this is the advantage of having signal space representation but before that as i said let's discuss some alien terms like linear combination and basis function right so first of all what is linear combination right so just consider a 2d case so let me just uh, redraw this because it's quite a bit congested so let's say we have let's say we have our coordinate system that we study from our primary schools that we have coordinate system and let's say this is i cap and j cap because we know that these are unit vectors in the direction of i in the direction of x and y respectively right so any vector v that we can represent in this 2d space is called can be represented as a i cap plus b j cap where a is what a is this length that is projection of this vector on x axis or we can say in the direction of i and b is this length which is the projection of this vector in the direction of j cap right now instead of this i am just twisting something that instead of this i and j okay or we can say instead of this x and i and y and j can i write some arbitrary vectors v1 and v2 can i write this then i can represent my vector v as linear combination of a v1 plus b v2 correct can i do this so yes of course for perfectly chosen v1 and v2 we can do this right and after that whatever space that we will get it's called vector space so basically vector space is having its own definition in mathematics and you can google it i am giving the link in the description for the wikipedia page of vector space here i am just quickly writing that what is vector space so vector space is nothing but set of elements or we can say vectors it consists of set of vectors or elements then set of scalars and some set of rules I am just writing few of them that is it should satisfy some properties like vector addition should be commutative right then associative and so on so you can google it 
right you can i can show you that here you can see that this is the wikipedia page and you will find thorough information about all this that i show that associativity commutativity identity inverse elements everything if all these properties are satisfied then only then we can say that a given uh, space is a vector space otherwise it's not but here we assume that we are having vector space right so this is a 2d vector space correct now we have here 3d vector space i am just extending the case for 3d and the same thing i can extend for nth dimension so in nd can i write like this right can i write like okay obviously I, i can write like this then now let's go towards what is basis right some of you might recall what is basis now after discussing this linear combination but if not then we will be uh getting familiar with this basis after discussing this linear dependence and independence so firstly let's discuss linear dependence and at the end of this topic you will automatically know what is basis now any vector v as i said can be represented as a linear combination of this vectors as we already saw that what is linear combination that any vector can be represented like this as a weighted sum vector space so if this linear combination of n vectors v1 v2 up till vn is zero obviously it will be zero in trivial case if we have a1 a2 all are zero but if it is zero for some a not all please mind that here i am i have written for some a not all it's not all right for some ai but not all if this is zero right then we can say that our vectors v1 v2 up till vn are linearly dependent let me consider the example for instance for instance let's say that we have three vectors a v1 plus b v2 plus c v3 right since this is zero we can write v3 as this right simple mathematical algebra so now as per our linear combination concept we can say that any arbitrary vector v can be written in terms of this v1 v2 and v3 now we know that what is v3 because this v1 v2 and v3 are linearly dependent so we are going to write this v3 over here so at the end we are left with this so further simplifying this what we can say that we are left with v s this into v1 and this into v2 so what we already did here can anyone guess here we killed v3 right and why we killed v3 because it was not needed it was redundant redundant like if we have v1 and v2 then we can easily uh, describe any arbitrary vector v in terms of v1 and v2 and v3 is not needed and this v1 and v2 set of such functions v1, here we have v1 and v2 but in higher dimensions we might get v1 v2 v3 up till vn right and this to v1 and v2 are called basis function i hope now somewhat you can get idea about basis function so can you compare it with this primary our coordinate system x comma y that over there we have i cap and j cap so if we represent any vector v in terms of x i cap or let's write a again a i cap just to avoid confusion and b j cap then here i cap and j cap are nothing but our basis function because this two are needed without this two we don't need any third because it's 2d right we don't need any third uh you can say coordinate or vector to represent this 2d vector right but this two are needed and note that this two are orthogonal as well right and over here as well as you can see that this is also orthogonal like v1 and v2 correct so in our gram smith definition we have orthonormal so it's nothing but normalized to one right and in since we are talking about signals here it is vectors but later on now we will see our next topic is the analogy between signals and vectors right so in gram smith we have signals so we have signal with unit energy over there right so our phi 1 phi 2 all these things that we have in our gram smith will have unit energy right so that we will see but now let's focus on this basis that what is basis i hope all you, all of you are now knowing what is basis function and what are basis functions right so here we killed v3 because it was not needed just we have v1 and v2 and we can represent any arbitrary vector v in a vector space right so 
if I need to write method uh, in terms of uh, words, then I can say that take spanning set. Now, what is this spanning set? I am coming on this in a minute. Then kill all linearly independent. Sorry, linearly dependent. My bad. Kill all linearly dependent vectors. Over here, it was v3. And at the end, we will get our basis or basis set, which consists here v1 and v2 in our previous example this one right so what is spanning set why we call this span so as the name suggests we know that v is represented as v1 and v2 like this will be some constant a and this will be some constant b so by varying this constant we can span our entire vector space or our entire 2d vector space here because we have just 2d vector space here right and that's why we call it that take the entire spanning set at first we have v1, v2 and v3 but we killed the linearly dependent set that is v3 over here and at the end we are left with v1 and v2 and which is nothing but our basis set or v1 and v2 are our basis function clear so now let's move towards so I just wrote this again over here that's it so now let's move towards something called inner product space so similar to vector space we have something called inner product space and why it is needed in vector space obviously we will get multiplication of vector with some scalar or so you can say translation but we don't have length notation there so what it introduces is that it gives or it introduces length notion or you can say notion of length also direction as well right so inner product is nothing but let let us first denote that how it is written that inner product between two vectors u and v is denoted like this okay and there are some properties of inner product space as well right which you can also google it and i will provide the link in the description if you want so this u and v is the inner product and this inner product is nothing but But for signal we will call inner product and what is the definition of that let's see that first so I am just uh, deriving one analogy or difference between these two vectors and signals so that things become more clear so in vectors we have dot product or we can say inner product whereas for signals let's say we have two signals v of t and u of t then their dot product or we can say sorry inner product because in terms of signal let me write here that here it is called inner product inner product of two signals is given by this please mind this conjugation because in real life we have complex signals as well so this com this conjugation will matter in that case but mostly we'll be dealing with real signals so this conjugation will not affect right then we have l2 norm which is this is the length of vector right so length of vector is nothing but there are some other names like Euclidean distance or length of vector or L2 norm right which is nothing but the dot product of vector with itself